So I'm going to show you how you can create a, uh, a breakout room situation where you can do escape rooms using Google Forms and Zoom together. So I'm going to start off in Google and I'm going to go ahead in my drive and just create a new uh, Google Form. And once this form opens, I'm going to go ahead and call it escape room. Now, if you're not familiar with Google Forms, um, the way it works is you can add multiple questions in here and you can choose from a variety of different types. Um, and you can actually use Google Forms to make quizzes and things, but we are gonna do something a little bit different with this form to set it up so that whenever a student completes a task, they can't get to the next task until they've completed the first one. And so in order to do that, um, what I'm gonna do is I need to create what they call sections. So over here on the right-hand side, I have a lot of different options to choose from here. So I can go ahead and add questions, I can import questions. Um, there's a spot here to add a title or description. And if I click on that, what this does is just gives me just a box to both go ahead and put a title or description of, uh, of what's going on here. So for this particular one, since this is the beginning of my task, I wanna go ahead and create a title and description and I'm going to simply welcome them to the task, let them know what to expect. So um, I'm going to go ahead and have a description typed in here as a welcome that's kind of going to be like a landing page when kids start uh, with this task. So they don't jump right into the first question. Um, I can let them know when I want them to start. Now, if you want to get really fancy, you could actually insert videos in here as well, uh, where you could actually record your own video, throw it on YouTube. Uh, even unlisted if you'd like, and then be able to insert that video introduction as well instead of a text introduction if you want. And then after that, that's all I want students to see. So there's a spot down here for question one. I'm gonna ignore that for now. And what I need to do is I need to divide this up into what they call sections. And I can do that using this button right here. And so if I click this add section button, this is now going to add a section two. So on section two, I'm gonna call this task one um, and then there's a question underneath it now if I needed to drag or rearrange things I can rearrange things by clicking on these little dots at the top of a section and drag and move these things from top to bottom I can also control what happens after this section whether it'll go to the next section or what I wanted to do uh, beyond that we'll talk more about that in a second so I have a escape room uh, introduction page here and then a task uh, first task and so in this first task I'm gonna go ahead and put in a question and this is the question or riddle or problem that I want my students to solve uh, by working together as a team so um, in this case let's say I'm just gonna do something for fun here so I have a riddle and so I'm gonna go ahead and type in my riddle into this box here and once I've typed that in, I can choose what type of question this is. So if I want this to be really easy, I could give them multiple choice. Um, or if I want this to be more challenging, I could actually make this a short answer question, uh, which in this case is what I wanna do. So when this is short answer, what I can set up here is that students have to get this exact answer correct before it'll take me to the next question. So in order to do that, you could make this a quiz. The problem with quizzes uh, in forms is you can't set it to automatically go to the next question based on whether that they get it right or wrong. Um, so instead of making this a quiz, what I need to do is I need to turn on what they call response validation, which is something you've probably never really played with before. So with this question right now, it's a short answer question, but in the bottom right hand corner, uh, I'm going to make this required. And if I hit these three dots, there's the ability to turn on response validation. So now what I can do here is I can choose what type of answer they need to put in here. So I can say, yeah, this should be text, not a number or length. Um, and I could say this text either contains, doesn't contain, um, you know, whatever I want it to be here. So let's say this is gonna be text, it has to contain, uh, in this case, the answer to this question is egg their text or their answer must include the word egg. It could be an egg, the egg, whatever they want. As long as it contains the word egg, I know they got the right answer. Now, if they get it wrong, then I can control what this is gonna say. So I could say, sorry, try again, or um, you know, keep thinking, make sure you check with your group, whatever, whatever it is I wanna say, I could do that. You must put something in here. Do not leave it default, uh, and I'll explain why here in a second. So 
once I've created that validation um, and I have this section here, now what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new section and I'm going to call this task two. And what I want to happen here is when they finish task one, if they get the answer uh, correct, then it would take them to task two which in this case, based on my sections, this is section two, my task two is actually section three, which is a little confusing, but either way, I could say, hey, after section two, then go to section three, um, which is task two. Now, it won't let them complete this unless they've given it the correct answer. If they give them an answer that they don't like, it's gonna keep refreshing it, keep popping that back up, and it won't let them get to it. So now if I go down to task two, I can hit this plus sign to add another question. And now I can go ahead and enter in another question in here. Again, any variety of topics, I'll just insert another riddle. And again, I'll do short answer, three dots, response validation, and say, yep, this is a text response and it should contain um, the words um, newspaper. Now again, you must put something in the custom error text. If you don't do that, uh, I'm gonna show you what happens if you leave this part blank. And again, make it a required question so they have to do it, otherwise it won't let them skip. And then I could create a new section for task three and go uh, the exact same way and have as many tasks as I want. And again, after this, after they finish section three, I could tell it to A, just go to the next section or go specifically to task three. Either way, we'll do the same thing. Now, once I'm finished and I've created my task, uh, I could fancy it up a little bit by going up here to my theme and I could choose to give it a header image. There's a bunch of ones in here to, to choose from that I could create on these lines and then simply insert and this will change the theme and color and everything to make everything match. I can even change font styles and stuff if I want. So now if I'm ready to test this out, I'm gonna go up here to preview. And when I hit preview, this is my escape room. So here is my first section with my welcome text. And then whenever I tell students to begin, that's when they will hit next. When they hit next, they get the first task that tells them what it is that they're supposed to do. So they get the answer and they talk to their group. They're in their breakout room. They're working with their teammates. They're sharing things back and forth, trying to guess it. As a teacher, you can pop in and out of that breakout room to see how they're doing. And if they get the answer and say, hey, I think it's um, a box. And so they type in the word box and they hit next. And oh, it says, nope, sorry, try again. That was my custom error text that I put in there. Um, so, okay, now they have to keep going. And so they can try a whole bunch of other things until they realize, oh, you know what, it's an egg. So they type in egg, they hit next, and boy, look at that, they got it correct, it takes them to task two. So once they've gotten task two correct, or task two correct, then they get same exact process, they can take as many guesses as they need to. There's no penalization for getting incorrect answers. Uh, again, it's simply a task, it's a way to promote collaboration, get kids to work together, and if they get the correct answer, um, it'll go through. Now, if they spell it wrong, um, remember in this question, I did not give it custom error text. So look at that, it just tells them what the answer is because that is part of that response validation. So you must put some custom text in there, otherwise it's going to tell them the answer, which is probably not what you want. But when they hit next, if they get it correct, uh, then it'll take them to the next task and so on and so on for as many tasks as you want. So now, if I go back to the form, uh, if you've never again used Google before uh, to create a Google form, once I've finished with it, up here in the upper left-hand corner, this is the name of that form. I can go ahead and give it a custom name, whatever I want. But to share this with students, the easiest way to do that uh, is if I hit this send option here. And when I hit send, uh, what this is gonna do, it gives me three different options. It gives me the ability to send it via uh, email, uh, I could copy a link or I can embed it. Uh, in this case, I just want the link. So I'm gonna choose link. Uh, I'm gonna highlight this text or simply hit copy and copy this text. And now I can paste that text directly into my content management system to give it out to the students. Um, or if I'm in Zoom, I could paste that directly into the chat. And that's what they will use to pull it up on their device right from um, their chat, just like that. And if I even wanted to, I could shorten the URL so it's not quite so long and take up so many lines. But 
that's how I can use um, Google Forms and response validation to create escape rooms uh, using Zoom and breakout rooms as well.